A little shout out to some of the people on the uh, Travco Motorhome uh, stuff, like uh, Ollie Carey. Uh, they're, uh, I guess, her dad and husband and those guys uh, and her are are doing one of these with some IKEA furniture on the interior. It's uh, kind of an interesting concept. I am going through electrical upgrades on mine. I've I've done solar on the roof, which I think I'm going to redo. And I'm running into a little quirk now. Something I think is a good idea and a necessity all modern vehicles have now is USB plugs so you don't have to run a cigarette lighter adapter for your USB powered stuff and on that I got this little dual USB outlet from uh, Amazon let's see if it, we can see what it's going to do there you see that blank it apparently has like a little capacitor in there that blinks out and charges up when I have two devices plugged in it simultaneously what happens is it it alternates so the reason you're hearing this beep from the phone is sometimes it's getting power and sometimes it's not and that's as it flips back and forth apparently between the two plugs so just something to understand that for some reason you get these two plugs on these things but if you run them simultaneously you uh, they, they, it apparently overloads a little deal and it automatically clicks itself out. Now, if anybody's not seen how the electrical stuff works on one of these Travcos, um, this, this was a Dodge Classic for several years. This is where a lot of your electrical stuff is going on. And your positive, I figured out, is a uh, red wire coming in, basic automotive type stuff. Your negative is a white wire, which is kind of a household color code, okay? Because the automotive uh, color code, usually red is black, uh, 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 I mean, I'm sorry, red is positive, black is negative. On household stuff, black is positive, red is negative. On these motorhomes, it's a mix, so the color codes are kind of tricky to figure out. But if you guys are working on these things, uh, the Chrysler color code coming into this is probably going to be relatively consistent. So I clip these, uh, do a wire nut arrangement, and then that's how we put new accessories. The way this access door works and the way the cables would go in it, um, this blank area is where you can install new stuff. Okay, that's, that's basically where you can install new stuff. Uh, the panel power on this, this device, which is a clock and a barometer work independently of the power system. This on mine is non-functional, not quite tracked down what happened. On these buttons, they don't all work, but we're, we're dealing with some of that stuff. Um... But a couple of quirks. One, you probably these days do want some 12 volt outlets up here on the kitchen counter uh, for running small 12 volt appliances and recharger stuff. Generally speaking, on these rigs where you're going to find your extra cigarette lighter plug stuff is up on the dash. And this vehicle had been retrofitted with a lot of extras. And then, of course, there was the actual cigar lighter which is has a heat sink in it. It's made to handle the extra heat of, a, of an actual element for lighting cigars and cigarettes. Don't forget, back in the 70s, that was, you know, a big deal. Everybody smoked. Um, what they smoked was <clears throat> a matter of personal preference, but nowadays even, you know, the weed is legal and that's just not really an issue. But back in the day, uh, you know, wouldn't surprise me if this was a stash point for some stuff, but... Uh, also, with electrical going on, you got to be careful when you're drilling a hole for these, but we're probably going to put in a couple more 12-volt outlets and call it happy. But I, I'm finding out that with these little dual deals here, that if you plug just one item in, like let's say I just plug in the one for the phone, it's it clicks on and then it's fine, right? That's a little beep that I get when I've plugged in power, but now it's it's kind of giving me some issues. Um, so, you know, quality check your stuff if you can before installation. It's not, I'm not sure if it's a device or my plug or what's going on with these things, but if you are doing motorhome restorations and upgrades, you probably want to keep in mind the, the extra electrical, upgrading the electrical. I've done this TV set here. Um, basically, it's a 24-inch 
from Best Buy that had a power adapter that ran on 12 volt. So it, it ran on AC and then it had an output of 12 volts. If it has an output of 12 volts, you simply clip the wires off and you have a DC television. One reason for using an articulating mount is that it's got a little bounce to it, a little wiggle to it, so that it can absorb a little bit of the shock of when things are going down the road. The same thing with my boosted antenna up here. The fiberglass body in the motorhome is not going to interfere with radio waves up high. Down low, there's a lot of metal framework that's going to do that, but up high, we're not going to have that problem. So the only quirk is that when you actually have a bunch of stuff plugged into these USBs at the same time and charging, you, you get this little power blink going on.